Hello everyone, welcome to another video from Somos Valley. This video is to congratulate all of those who qualified CSR NET Life Science Examination for this last session of exam that is June 2024. And we are preparing for the upcoming December 2024 exam. Now, I have to share some of my thought regarding the results that have been declared. The cutoff is not declared yet, so you will not know that what cutoff was there. But I can tell you few things by just seeing the results. First of all, this is the first time where they mentioned three separate sections to the result. Generally, they discuss GRF results, Junior Research Fellowship, then Lectureship, LS, and these are the two uh, ordinary things like GRF means those who qualify GRF are generally getting uh, money to do their PhD. Basically, call it stipend for the purpose of doing their PhD uh, for five years CSIR or UGC sponsor their PhD. So, they pay for it. If you are UGC GRF, then UGC is going to pay for that. If you are CSIR GRF, then CSIR will be your funding agency for PhD. And then there is lectureship LS. LS is a section where you will not be offered any fellowship. So what is LS? Why do you need LS? LS is lectureship qualification. So you are eligible to be a lecturer, associate, uh, assistant professor in colleges and universities all across India with the help of this lectureship qualified certificate. But with lectureship certificate, it is not possible to do PhD with stipend from CSIR or UGC. Obviously, you can do PhD even with LS. I have seen many people have done that. If you know some lab who are willing to hire you as a GRF even with the help of lectureship, uh, only lectureship degree, uh, lectureship certificate, then you can do that, right? But who will pay the money? That's not guaranteed. You either will not be paid any money or uh, the institute will manage some fund from their research fund, research grant to give you some amount of money per month as a travel allowance and stuff, right? Now, this time there is a third category. Directly it is mentioned as a third category, also as a PhD only category. Now, this PhD only category, uh, why it is there? Now, to me, PhD only category is just a Joomla. There is nothing else to be mentioned. Basically, CSIR. Uh, have not, CSR had a laid back attitude, they don't need to change anything, they haven't changed anything since 10, 15, 20 years and uh, right now they thought like of adding something here because you know there are people who always want to do PhD and they complain about it like with LS, a lectureship certificate, they are not eligible to do PhD. So what they created, they created this third section, third category, like PhD only. If you qualify for this category, then you will be provided the opportunity to do PhD. With this category qualification, you can go to different institutes and colleges and universities and apply to their research positions if there is any. And if you uh, qualify, if you, there might be written exams, there will be interviews obviously. If you qualify that, they might allow you to do PhD in those institutes. But again, CSIR or UGC will not fund your PhD on PhD only category. I repeat, CSIR or UGC is not going to pay a single penny to support your PhD in the PhD only category. Yes, but you can get a support, monetary support from the institute itself to do the PhD. By the uh, law of the book, a person with LS certificate is not eligible to do PhD. But by the, again, same law of the book, with PhD only category is eligible to do PhD as a GRF than as an SRF in different not institutes. Too. But yeah, if now what you need to do is that if you qualified for GRF category, then you are ready to search labs, search labs. And this is something that you need to put most of your time. If it is required six months, nine months, it's still fine because you have two years validity to apply for PhD with this particular GRF qualification. So you have the time in your hand, you can search the lab, but please search the better lab. You know, if you fail to search a good lab, people search for the topics, but don't go with the topics. Ultimately, you learn things, but searching a wrong lab and get into a wrong lab will ruin your PhD career. That is a piece of advice that I can give you. The most important thing in your PhD journey is going to be your lab environment, is going to be your lab head, is going to be the place where you will do the PhD because PhD will not take only five years 
that's another Joomla. PhD will take six, seven, eight years sometimes in different places. So you need to build contacts for this whole amount of time of six, seven, eight years. You need to build strong connections and contacts with people of different fields and industries so that you get a chance to do postdoc fellowship from a good institute for a good place with a handsome salary and amount. Because throughout these years, you might get married and your life will not stop. Your life might continue and your expenditures will continue to increase. So keeping this in mind, if you want to do research in India, do PhD in India and then do postdoc outside of India, get a good lab. For those who qualified for third category, PhD only, I'll recommend you to again, if you have any lab, if, like contact your college uh, if there is any teacher fond of you, contact to them. They have the connect connections and contacts. They will tag you to someone in different institutes or, or industry. There are industry funded PhD programs as well. And if you uh, convince them that you are a right candidate for that purpose, they might give you fellowship from their pocket and you can do PhD there. And for the third category, LS category, lectureship category, you know, obviously, you appeared in this category, you get uh, to qualify the list cutoff. So, you are there, congratulations too. And if you already done your PhD, then you can search colleges to apply to become an assistant professor and start to do that at this time, okay. So, these are the three different sections and, the, uh, and three different plan of action that you should do right now in order to get ready for the next steps. And if you fail this time, which is a possibility that most of the people watching this video obviously failed because very few people qualified. So in that case, it is not the end of the world. You can still have chances. So get a get yourself together, find out how much score you got, right? And also find out how, much, how many questions you answered, what score you got, what was your negative marking and work on all these areas so that you get stronger grip of the reality and so that in the next upcoming December NET exam or even the upcoming June 2025 NET exam, you are well prepared and uh, you are well prepared to, to qualify that, right? For the December NET exam, our batch is going on. For the upcoming June December exam, the admission process will begin from November, mid-November end, okay? So that's it for today. I believe you get benefit from this video regarding my personal view on this three different set and also your plan of action for all the different three categories. If you like this video, please hit the like button, share this video with your friends and colleagues, subscribe to get more videos like that in future. Thank you. Bye.